So um, I, I do it in a way that uh, I hope that benefits you. So so let's let's see a couple of uh, things from the the portal. Let's go through there, uh, and and I do some demos as well. So that that's the reason why I have a multiple uh, browser windows visible. Uh, at once, so I don't need to switch between the, the windows. It's easier this way. And and like Vipa said, I, I uh, kind of a got the uh, kind of a got understanding of that you you went already through and and you have already went through the kind of a content here. So so these kind of a agenda that we have on our plates today. This should be on on at least on some level, kind of a familiar for you. So all of these components that you have uh, here on on the website, we'll try to cover on some level at least. But like I said, it's it's a lot, and uh, we probably need at least four hours to cover this in in bit more. Kind of a reasonable way, dividing it to different different uh, sections or products uh, from from our side. One kind of a very fundamental things that I will start with is is the kind of a uh, shared responsibility model. And I don't know if this has come up uh, in a previous sessions. This probably comes up in in a kind of a sessions that will will follow but i think this is a very important picture to understand and and the kind of a reasoning behind this is uh, that on on premise side customer is responsible for for everything they have so uh, physical access to the data center from from that point up to the everything that you you have kind of a defined on information or data level that's all responsibilities of customer when we move into the cloud we have an infrastructure as a service and and the platform as, as a service and and then software as a service depending on on which level we are the responsibilities are, are a bit different and and the kind of a responsibilities that uh, customers have is kind of a uh, dropping the level that they need to care about still from the kind of a cloud security point of view i i think the kind of a main thing to understand here is that th there isn't an option in which customer is is completely free of the responsibilities regarding the uh, regarding the security of their cloud environments so even if there is a software as a service that they are using it's still uh th there are bits and pieces that the customer is responsibility uh over and this is something that uh, it's very often misunderstood. It's easy to understand that, OK, we, we have a cloud service and, and we spin up, uh, let's say, teams. And, and in teams, we have uh, documents. It's easy to kind of uh, uh, think through that, OK, Microsoft is, is responsible of, of the security of that environment. And, and for the large part, that's true. But there are still things that the customer can configure. There are still ways that uh, they can improve the security of that environment and so forth. So, so this is very good picture to kind of a, to remind yourself that okay, uh, what's the level of uh, responsibility that I need to take over uh, from from the environment that I'm handling at the moment. I, I won't cover these um, encryption and, and uh, kind of a basic stuff. Th these are 
easy to for for you to cover and 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 understand. These are um, repeated com multiple times, and and these are kind of a basic things that you need to um, understand and and learn in order to understand the kind of a uh, deeper level of of uh, like. Uh, product features that we have on, on our side. Uh, compliance concepts, this will we'll cover, I think that was the last part. We'll dive into this uh, a bit in the later. So the identity side, um, this basically is um, the Entra ID from the Microsoft point of view. Everything that kind of touches the identity or access management is, is on, under the brand of Entra, uh, Entra ID. And, and, and there is a multiple products included in, within that. Uh, there, there are things that handle the authentication and authorization. Authentication is, of course, uh, process that we, we make sure that uh, the person that logs into this team uh, session, team session is, is Juha, not someone else. And, and the authorization is, is how we handle, hand over the permissions for that user. Um, when, we, when we talk about the cloud security, the identity is, is the key thing. And, and you can understand this in a way if you compare the on-premise environments uh, that uh, are typically inside customers' own facilities. They, they are protected uh, by the locks and, and, and from the kind of a data point of view to, through the firewalls and so on. So, there, there is no access outside of those perimeters uh, that, that protect the environment. In, in cloud, it's a different deal because uh, the SaaS application, for example, if, if you are using uh, Teams or SharePoint or Outlook uh, online, you can, you can access that. Uh, throughout the internet. There, there is no perimeter that blocks the access to certain, uh, to, to certain networks or to certain countries or, or regions. You can access that anywhere. And that means that uh, the, the only thing that kind of defines the perimeter is, is the identity. And, and that's the reason in recent years that that we have kind of a, from the security point of view, we have uh, talked a lot about uh, uh, multi-factor authentication and, and protecting the, the identity. Because if you lose that, you you basically give out access to the hackers or, or individual using your identity. Maybe not not in a in the best possible way in that environment. Yeah, and, and this kind of erases things like uh, well, authentication, authorization. I already mentioned administration for for these uh, identities is is key as well. And and of course, whatever we do in 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 a cloud, we need to. Kind of a create an audit trail uh, to track who's uh, getting access to which resources and so forth. Um, yeah, this this kind of a providing the uh, identity. This is uh, uh, used to be Azure Active Directory. Now it's called Entra ID, <clears throat> and this is. Um, basically a directory of uh, identities. It's nothing more than that. It's a list of identities and, and their uh, 
parameters or or kind of a, uh, features that these identities have. And you'll understand how, how we'll use those parameters and, and so forth in, in a moment. Um, concept of federation, uh, this is maybe important to understand as well. This is something that uh, uh, we we do that in in Entra ID specifically. Uh, so my identity is not Juha. My identity is Juha plus Microsoft, which means that uh, I I can access I can given access to any of the other directories in in uh, uh, globally in in any other customer. Uh, or organization using Entra, they can give access to me, and the access is based on on a user ID and and the tenant ID. That's the kind of a globally unique uh, identifier that can be given access to whatever other directory we want. And in this case, it's a domain B and domain A. And, and, and this way I can log into my domain and, and use the IDP identity provider that I have access to. And, and, and when I access that and, and when I kind of approve myself uh, that I'm who I say I am, um, the other domain can trust that, uh, that identity. Of course, there, there is situations where we can uh, apply additional uh, safe measures on, on top of uh, uh, these type of accesses. So if we want, we can, we can say in domain A that uh, although we know that the domain B is, is using uh, this and this type of uh, authentication methods, we need to be a bit more stricter and, and utilize a bit more advanced authentication methods. So, so there is additional authentication maybe happening uh, in, in between. Let's move forward. Now, um, we will come back to the identity uh, a bit more. Uh, but this covers also all the other Azure security capabilities uh, that that uh, you have when when you build a cloud environment, and this is a, a list of to, those features or services that Microsoft provides for their customers to utilize. Firewalls, like I, like I mentioned, these are typically used uh, to kind of block access uh, in very commonly used in, in on-premise environments, but these are also used in, in a cloud environments to kind of a separate networks or limit access between networks, basically. And, and there is a specific uh, type of firewall called web application firewall which is uh, built uh, so that it, it only handles this uh, uh, HTTPS, HTTP traffic. And, and this is very handy when, when there is a kind of a customers want to build a, a, like a SaaS application based on HTTPS and, and they want to kind of a make a, a deeper inspection of that traffic with the web application firewall and they can do that. Uh, uh, the kind of a concept is, is the same as, as the normal firewall, but uh, the kind of a capabilities are a bit more advanced and, and, and kind of a tweak towards this, this type of use. Network segmentation, this is uh, nothing new. This is the same. Uh, in, in cloud environments, there might be a, a different applications, there might be different uh, departments 
within the within the company within the customer uh, environment that needs to be separated this is especially true when when you have a, like a financial uh, uh, organization or uh, something else that is strictly uh, kind of a building the, the uh, blocks between different networks and and now that they, they separate these networks, it's easier to kind of give access to the right uh, users or right groups of users to, to these applications. Or even in a situation where they want to kind of a totally separ separate maybe the, the data sources for, for the application in a way that uh, only specific uh, like a servers in that uh, environment can access these database uh, servers behind behind the scenes, making this kind of a more protected environment through the uh, network segmentation. And of course, this kind of a brings in the load balancing as well. So so you can you can do the load balancing uh, <clears throat> using these same concepts as well. Um, Azure has the network security groups, uh, which can be used in a way that uh, these block access, uh, well, it can be between the resources, it can be uh, between specific uh, networks or groups of users, um, different things you want to do. And in this case, it's like uh, uh, HTTPS is uh, blocked to one VM1 and, and VM2 is, is uh, open to use it through internet. And these type of things, it can be sometimes, uh, well, it, it can be done also outbound and inbound. So, so sometimes it's beneficial to kind of block all the traffic uh, inbound, but also most of the traffic outbound as well. If if the the VM that we are talking about is is not accessing internet, uh, or there is one port that it's it's using for the external access, for example. Um, the basic concept behind this is same as as uh, firewalls in general. So understanding how the firewalls are, are kind of configured and, and how they are um, using the rules benefits you to understand uh, the, these concepts as well. Um, from the management point of view, um, we have a solution called Azure Bastion. And, and just in time access. And this is a ki kind of a um, design for the uh, admin users so they can utilize the Azure Bastion as a kind of a uh, uh, this uh, administration environment for the for the larger environment behind it. And and it can be combined with just in time access. So just in time means uh, that uh, we will give uh, admins access uh, like uh, in in a w when they need it so they can they can kind of a uh, request access for like 2 hours or 4 hours to do a specific uh, admin job like updating servers for example after that, it's automatically closed, and and the kind of a role doesn't have access to that environment anymore. And this is one way of protecting uh, protecting the identity, but protecting the resources behind it as well. So we can we can kind of uh, make sure that uh, admin rights for the users are not always on. They are just uh, on when when they are needed, and 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 we can apply, for example, 
uh, approval process if needed. Let's say that there is an external user that has a, a needs to do a specific update for the specific software uh, in this type of environment that uh, external user, user can, can request access and then there is a approval uh, from someone within the company to kind of give access and, and then, then we can move forward and, and that uh, update procedure can, can, can move forward. Um, DDoS protection is, is one thing, um, um, distributed denial of services is something that uh, is, is a problematic for the uh, online services and, and that's the reason why we have this kind of a way of blocking that. I'm not going into the details of how it works, there, there is a a couple of different services that can be applied in, in front of these HTTP, HTTPS type of services typically and, and, and limit the access to um, how, how much uh, denial of service attacks will, will affect those services. And, and one thing I, I heard that uh, you, you potentially will do the SC100 uh, certification exam, one of the things that you should uh, like go through in detail is this different type of uh, encryption services and, and when to use these. Um, th there is a lot of these and, 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 and these are used in different situations. But we are not today uh, diving into those details. So the management side, um, this is one thing that I wanted to, to cover maybe in, in a short demo, and that's the uh, posture management. Uh, this is something that it's fairly difficult to understand, uh, like uh, by, by explaining it, explaining that in, in words, but let's see how, how this works from the demo point of view. So. I'm accessing from the Azure portal uh, Defender for Cloud. This used to be called the Security Center, and I, I think the, some of the, I'm not sure if this uh, spoke about the Security Center, but yeah, um, that's the same thing. Uh, I, I saw the old name somewhere, and, and, and nowadays it's called Defender for Cloud. And in Defender for Cloud, we have a, a couple of things. First of all, security posture. This is, um, this is kind of an ongoing assessment of um, all of the components that you have in, in an Azure environment. So all the VMs, all the databases, um, everything that you have uh, included in here. And it will do constant uh, assessment of that environment and look into that uh, from the kind of a vulnerability point of view, uh, checking uh, configuration, if, if there is a way to kind of a make it more secure. And it gives uh, this kind of a uh, score that we call secure score, uh, and, and that kind of reflects the environment's uh, level of security. So every customer, every subscription they have, all of them have this. And in my environment, it's 57%, and, and that kind of a doesn't mean uh, itself anything, but uh, the kind of a rough idea behind this is that if you are below 50%, uh, there is probably um, some problems regarding the MFA configuration, so not all of the uh, users and, and especially the admin users are not using MFA and that should be kind of a mitigated 
immediately. If you're between uh, 50% and 65%, you typically have the MFIs enabled, but uh, there are probably some additional stuff in the environment that uh, causes additional risks. And in my environment, I have a, kind of a configured this in a way that this is only 57% because I, I need to kind of show this uh, to, to partners and customers uh, and, and demo stuff uh, through this. If you are beyond 65%, it's typically uh, kind of a, the approach that that customer takes on security in Azure is, is fairly good and, and there is kind of a typically a structured way that they are doing it. Um, in here, you can also see that it's not only Azure. In my environment, it's Azure, but there is also AWS and, and Google Cloud uh, GitHub and GitHub, uh, GitLab uh, included here. So you can enable this in, in other environments as well. So you can use Defender Cloud to protect AWS and, and Google as well. Now, um, I, I can see that my 57% is, is uh, probably below what, what I'm expecting and, and what should I have. So I can see that the recommendation by clicking here. So um, these are all the recommendations Azure uh, Defender for Cloud gives you automatically. And it's kind of a, um, sorted by risk level. So the highest uh, risk is on top. And, and this says that, OK, I have some problems in my uh, SQL databases that I, I need to take care of and and this is this is now posture management so if i click that open i can i can delegate this to to that uh, service owner i can set the owner there there is a email address for that person i can notify this owner weekly that they should fix the problem. I can also notify the owner's direct manager. And I, I can send out this email every Monday to them so that they, they know that uh, the problems in, in, in the SQL database that they own is, is uh, causing problems in, in the environment. So this, this is kind of a, um, taking responsibility of fixing these environments in a way that uh, because not, not every time the admin uh, itself is capable of, of uh, updating, for example, the databases behind it. They don't know what's running on, on a database and, and when those should be updated and, and so forth. So this, this gives the kind of a, um, overview of the environment and this is constantly updated if, if the, the SQL databases in this environment are now updated accordingly and, and fixed, they will, will be automatically removed from the list. And, and it will also raise the, the secure score that I have in this environment. Great. That was that was a kind of a short introduction to Defender for Cloud. Um, like I said, continuous assessment, uh, how, how to harden the resources and, and the services, and the kind of a, um, maybe the main point uh, with Defender for Cloud is that in, in typical on-prem environments, um, when you have a, like a physical servers, you would be uh, deploying a antivirus software or, or uh, endpoint protection type of thing in that in cloud there is a lot of these services that don't have a physical service like databases that run uh, in in a in a service fashion and and there is no way that we could 
install any endpoint protection directly anywhere. Uh, so, so therefore, we have this kind of a work uh, workload protection I mentioned here, cloud workload protection. It's a way that I can protect my database is a specific piece of software that that can be applied to these services so that uh, they, they have a same level of protection as, as these kind of endpoint protections have on, on uh, physical machines, for example. And we have those uh, for, for containers, we have those for the databases, DNS servers, the list goes on and, and, and uh, you, can, you can do that all from the Defender for, for Cloud. Uh, Defender for Cloud also kind of gives out these security benchmarks, so you can kind of uh, see what are the uh, industry standard way of, of protecting these type of environments. Couple of words about um, monitoring the environments and, and the kind of a seam. Uh, and solar environments uh, in, in Microsoft Word uh, or, or language that's uh, Sentinel. So Sentinel is SIEM and SOAR uh, kind of a product. Um, this is typically environment where you collect, let's see if there is a better picture here. Yeah, so you collect uh, all the logs uh, as, as we talk about uh, the identity, for example, but you can collect those from the uh, virtual servers, databases, you can collect all the alerts uh, in, in different environments. And, and then you kind of uh, uh, apply automated detection rules. So if these and these type of uh, things happen in, uh, in a, for example, in a, a virtual server, this and this type of event happens, then we we will kind of uh, um, detect that and, and push that to the analyst that can start investigating that bit more. Is it actually a, a hacker trying to get in into that server or is it something else? And 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 this whole like a uh, uh, circle can be automated in a way that we are automatically collecting the data, the, the logs and, and the information. The detection is, is sometimes automated so that we, we kind of collect all the information that are uh, creating this incident, potential incident, and, and um, we collect the external information to kind of uh, additionally reach uh, the kind of a logs that we have collected and then the kind of a response can be also automated so that okay if this and these things together happen and, and we know that the kind of a uh, connection to those servers are coming these and these unreliable IP addresses for example then we automatically uh, disable or block the user uh, identity that has been used for, for this uh, connection, something like that. So Sentinel is, is this kind of a um, central service that collects all the information, um, kind of a, goes through what's included in um, and try to figure out what are the patterns behind it uh, if there is a potential incidents uh, happening at the moment in my environment and so forth. Now, um, it's not only the Azure environment that the Sentinel collects the data from, it's also um, Microsoft 365 Defender. This is a kind of a portfolio of, of different services um, where, where we're protecting um, also, identity uh, 
things on, from, from the defender for identity point of view. We, we are protecting the endpoints and, and applications. These are typically applications that uh, are uh, used by the organization, but not provided by Microsoft. Like uh, ServiceNow, for example, could be one of these. We want to know if uh, um, ServiceNow uh, environment has been utilized in a way that uh, is not typical use of that environment. We pull, pull in that log and provide that to Sentinel. We, we do the same for the uh, Office 365. Uh, applications like SharePoint Teams, uh, Exchange and, and, and so forth. And, and we have a kind of a specific Defender tools that we use to, to protect these environments um, in detail. And if, if you're doing the uh, SC100 certification exam, these, these are something that you need to kind of a go through and understand what uh, specifically these uh, Defender tools actually do. So I'm, I'm not, I'm conscious of time, so, so let's move forward and, and kind of a, uh, notify that th there are these tools that you, you can use for, uh, in this case, protect the uh, uh, email traffic, at that safe by, by safe attachments and, and safe links and, and so forth. You can you can protect the endpoints. You have uh, for, for the mo most of the devices, let's put it that way, uh, almost all devices, almost all environments you can you can install defender for endpoint. Um, that includes mobile phones and and uh, and computers and so forth. Um, Defender for cloud apps, like I said, this is kind of a design to, to protect um, typically third party uh, SaaS applications, uh, get the information out of those environments, um, how they are used, if they are, if there is a uh, identity breaches or someone is pulling the data out of these environments and and kind of a transferring that to to ex outside of the organization and so forth we can also kind of detect that okay which applications are actually used within the uh, company at the moment the kind of a high high interest uh, use of AI uh, tools, different type of AI tools and different type of uh, AI websites is something that uh, uh, we are collecting the information out of. And, and there, there are already a safeguards that we can block some of the, the external AI uh, uh, services. And the reason typically is that uh, um, we don't want to company data uh, to be uh, copy pasted into the some random AI uh, service and potentially handing over uh, confidential data outside of the company in that situation. Uh, Defender for identity is um, bit interesting because this is uh, on M365 side, not in Azure, uh, like pa part of the Entra, but this is kind of an uh, uh, on-prem tool, tool that can protect the on-prem identity components. And then um, all of these tools are kind of a combined in the M365 Defender portal. Uh, let's see if we have time to kind of a, have a sneak peek of that as well. Um, so, so 
you have the portal window and, and you have all the tools that you have uh, you you have licensed you can you can see them on on the left side and, and then you have the configuration screens for every of those tools on on right side um these tools that that were listed here all of these provide some sort of alert uh, views and incident views um, which are then combined under the uh, the defender portal and if if you have in in your environment the sentinel as well you can pull that information to the sentinel so you can combine uh, the information from n365 uh, defender and azure and, and put everything in Sentinel and, and have a kind of a total view of, of what's happening in that environment from the security point of view. And like last, last thing for the, the Defender portal, we have a secure score uh, on that side as well. So not only we are you kind of using Defender for Cloud in Azure, to calculate the secure score, but we do that same thing in in M365 Defender side as well, and we actually do that in in the compliance portal, which is the Purview uh, portal or compliance manager. We do the same thing, but we'll we'll look into that in a moment. Um, yeah, Azure AD. This is maybe in in a bit funny um, that uh, the Azure AD or Entra ID nowadays. This is the at this point. This should, in my opinion, should be the first thing that we cover. Um, so Entra is is the brand name, and and there is a lot of. Uh, products underneath it. Uh, and let's see, I have this. This is my M365 admin center and the reason why I'm here and not in Azure, although we are we are talking about Entra, is that uh, in this environment I have uh, enough licenses that we can use Entra portal. I can still jump to that Entra portal uh, from the M365 admin center. This is the kind of a normal admin center that you have probably seen, seen already. You have the different admin centers. Security is the, the defender one. The compliance is the purview. Endpoint manager is, is still separately here. Uh, identity is the Entra one. And, and that's what we are kind of seeing at the moment. So this covers everything that uh, uh, can be done on identity side. You have uh, users, you have groups, you have devices, because devices are identities as well uh, from the Entra point of view. And then you have, uh, which is the, maybe the interesting part is the identity uh, protection side and there we have a conditional access and conditional access is a um, very interesting one because it provides a way of envio the organization and customers to to protect their environments in a way that uh, is, is dynamic uh, and, and, and can be applied to specific use cases. In, in my environment, I have kind of a defined beforehand that, okay, um, I have this named location. So, so all the networks coming from Finland and Sweden are included in, in, in this kind of a um, um, network like location setup that I have. And if I want to apply a, a policy, uh, I can I can create a new one, new conditional access policy. Let's 
give, give it a name. And then I can apply that, okay, this policy is for all users. I can apply it to include all users, but I can also exclude some of the users. And, and if, if I want, I can, I can kind of select the directory resources and, and maybe uh, kind of a design that global admins are not part of this, this policy. Include everyone except the global administrators. And, and then I define the uh, target resources. I can uh, do the same. Basically, I can uh, select all of the cloud applications um, that Entra ID ID identities are used. On the network side, I can I can kind of select which network locations are, let's do it the other way. Um, I apply this to the, all of the network, uh, well, basically any network or location uh, I have, but then I exclude the ones that I, I have on my trusted locations list, Finland and Sweden in this case, and then I can uh, select that, okay, what type of things I, I want to happen. So if user risk is medium or high, um, well, let's not use that one. Let's use uh, sign-in risk instead. We'll configure that to be high or medium. And, and in that way, we can, we can then decide what to do. So we can grant access, but require uh, MFA for these, these users. Um, we, can, we can define that, OK, we require a specific authentication method for these users. And I can select, for example, that it's a phishing resistant MFA, which requires then like a FIDO2 security key, for example. Or I can, I can kind of uh, require these users um, to have a password change before they can access uh, from from these other networks, uh, the the resources that are included, which in our case is all all of the cloud apps, and so forth. Typically, typically this is not done in this way. Um, typically, this would be that I would select uh, specific applications um, out of the list. Let's say that this is like. Uh, sub environment or dynamics environment or business critical environment for, for my company. I would select that one and, and uh, kind of define that in order for users to kind of uh, get access to that environment, if they are not in Finland or Sweden, they need to kind of uh, do additional MFA, for example before they can access the environment. And this is very handy way of kind of making sure that um, um, any hacker that gets hold of those uh, identities, they are not able to utilize them. Well, at, le at least not easy because they need to be, uh, they need to be in, in Finland or Sweden to kind of avoid uh, MFA from from that environment and so forth. So these type of things are, are something that you can do from from Entra. Um, this covers uh, a lot of uh, different ways of uh, kind of a protecting the environment. 
Um, it includes uh, kind of a well, depending on the situation, you can you can uh, do some of the stuff uh, like free uh, with, without any additional licenses. Then you can have a uh, Office 365 and, and get kind of a, some of the features available through those licenses. And if you have the premium one or premium two, then you have the kind of a full scope and, and full set of features uh, from, from the Entra ID side. I don't uh, dive into this last, I have, it seems like <laughs> three minutes uh, left. So, so let's jump into uh, the compliance side. I, I will kind of share a couple of things on, on that side. Here we get the, the conditional access that we, we configured a moment ago. Uh, this kind of opens that, uh, this, this illustration opens how, how that works and, and what can you do in, in, uh, with that type of configuration. And then we have the identity protection uh, side of as well. There is uh, access reviews uh, that you can do, access packages. Uh, maybe we do in a way that we, we left out the, the compliance side uh, from the, this session and, and we'll do another one or uh, you, you can do that on, on your own. Let's use this two minutes now for the for the uh, identity discussion because there is a, a very good stuff here. Um, the access review is something that uh, can be used to to verify that the users uh, in that organization have a right role and and that right role they have uh, through through that right role they have a right access to groups and resources and and teams and and so forth. Uh, th these are typically pushed out uh, to managers so that the manager can do an access review for his and her team to verify that, okay, uh, this team's channel, for example, requires this uh, uh, security group and and that security group should th these users should be part of that these type of things are are uh, can be done through the access reviews and and there is a kind of a uh, machine learning side of this machine learning can identify that if if uh, through the access reviews it seems like there is a additional persons from the different departments or different uh, teams accessing a resource that is typically used maybe for HR, um, that's automatically flagged uh, from this point of view. There is also um, a lot of things that uh, like a privilege access and, and, and things like that, that uh, kind of a can be limited uh, uh, the, the admin typically the admin use in that environment and and that's the kind of a just in time access that I mentioned earlier so that uh, these privileged uh, accounts are used in a way that uh, the role is not active all the time. There is identity protection, which kind of uh, includes signing risks. And these are something that uh, uh, Microsoft has built uh, on a background. So th these are kind of uh, typically um, assessed in, in background and automatically assigned. 
So we, we can flag automatically if there is a sign-in risk. And, and one example of sign-in risk could be that uh, Juha is, is now logged in from Karina. But if I'm in, in one hour logged in from New York, there is probably something fizzy happening on background and this kind of an impossible travel is, is something that we are tracking behind the scenes. And this will kind of a, uh, raise the risk level for that uh, sign-in. And, and this can be used with the conditional access and, and maybe kind of a, um, in some cases, the, the identity might be blocked. In some cases, it might be that uh, there is a uh, requirement to change the password or, or apply an MFA, additional MFA uh, for that user in order to sign in. Now, two minutes over and, and we have not covered compliance at all. Sorry about that. I. I promise to come back if uh, if needed to cover the kind of a poor view side of things and, and, and kind of a deep dive of compliance if you want to have, have that uh, later on. Uh, for those of you who've reviewed uh, the content, and of course we've been following uh, Yuha's kind of presentation, is there any questions? I know we are over time, but I guess we can take a couple of questions if that's okay, Yuha. Sure, of course. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Uh, there's a question in the chat. If a user is clicking all phishing emails they get, is there a way to put the user on a high risk list? Yeah, that, that requires a, probably a lot of things to happen behind the scenes. I, I went through very fast um, the Defender. Uh, let's see if I can jump. Uh, where was the defender side? So I want to show you something. This one. Defender for Office 365. This is the kind of a th that mainly protects users from phishing uh, attempts. And the way we do that is that. Um, we use the safe attachments and safe links. And what happens behind the scenes is that uh, all the all the kind of a links that you you received in email are changed into these kind of a safe links if this capability is on, of course. And we are not pushing the direct link uh, to the user immediately. We will check uh, until the end when, when that click happens. Up to that point, we will check if that uh, link is actually safe to utilize. This not this will not provide a kind of a full protection for that uh, um, phishing site, but it's probably uh, kind of a catching up most of the uh, situations because. Probably in some other environment, someone else has already clicked it. And, and as Microsoft, we are collecting this kind of a metric behind the scenes and, and we'll know immediately that this is a phishing site. And then because the kind of a original link is not provided uh, to the user with the email, we can kind of a direct or, or block um, that link um activating in 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 that customer's environment so this is one way of kind of a protecting the environment with uh, kind of a phishing uh emails thank you so much i hope that answers the questions um any more questions yeah maybe one one kind of additional thing Regarding the education of users, we have a, something called attack simulator as well. It's actually here. This is the this is kind of a way of sending uh, phishing emails 
to users within the organization, but in a safe way. So if they click these kind of a simulated phishing emails, we can provide a kind of a education and, and kind of a learnings for, for these users. That's the kind of a simulator of uh, phishing emails within the organization. And that's, that's kind of a highly used feature within, within this uh, Defender for Office plan. Any, any other questions? I guess not. So thank you so much, Yuha, for this session. And uh, we will take a break now for summer, but we will resume our learning circles in August. So please join us and uh, please keep um, looking out for the new courses that we're releasing on Skills for Jobs. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in the next session. And once again, thank you, Yuha. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you.